Hey ghoulies, Homesy here to announce that I am officially over summer and I am ready for Spooktober, you know? And Hocus Pocus, the blonde witch who's like, amok, 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 amok. That's how I feel right now in my bones. I just want it to be fall. So in order to transition and just like recap the end of August so we can just say bye to it, I want to show off like all my new spooky Halloween decorations, talk about the most recent nerdy news and what's in store for my channel. And I'm going to be talking about a lot of different topics. So if one doesn't tickle your fancy, don't worry. I'm going to label and timestamp it. So this is going to be a chatty video. Just sit back, relax, cozy up, and let's get to it. Okay, first I want to show off my growing skeleton army and I feel almost like a necromancer at this point with just like my minions. <laughs> so here's my first casualty of the Great Skeleton War. And if you understand that Tumblr reference, you are a veteran nerd. But this arrived in shipping with a little boo-boo. I'll glue it back together. I'll fix it. But I feel like Michael's killed it this year. They knocked it out of the park with their beautiful pink floral skeleton decor and it just appealed to me because like one half of me wants to be a cute woodland elf and the other half wants to be a vampire with like a velvet goth coffin. So this is like a reconciliation <laughs> of both sides of me. So I really liked what I got and I also got this romantic couple till death do them not part, dearly departed. I thought it was romantic in a way like um, Tim Burton's The Corpse Bride. That's what I was thinking of when I got it. And then I got doo -doo -doo, a lovely pink lustrous skeleton skull of a unicorn. <laughs> And I'm obsessed with unicorns, only this is an undead one. And last but not least, from Michael's this year, I got a hand. So if you're curious, Kage, you will love this one. It's basically just a palm that says, follow your heart. And I feel like almost with the color scheme, that they're pretty muted colors and they're pink, that you could almost have them up year round. So... I can vibe with that. Okay, next I want to move on to nerdy news, and I'm not sure if you can catch Oliver in this frame, but I am a Dragon Age fan. Morrigan is one of my ultimate waifus, like one of my favorite female characters of all time, so I love, love, love Dragon Age, and I was so excited to be fed little crumbs of concept art recently. <laughs> We're like Sherlock in this fandom, like trying to decipher all these clues from like blurry <laughs> because we have nothing else right now to go off of. <laughs> but I think a lot of people, the big question is, who can we romance? I know like a lot of sapphics, like a lot of the lesbians and the bi girls like me, they're going for, they're horny for the Quinari tall, beautiful buff lady, but I have my eyes on, I think she's going to be a mage. I think she's going to be a mage, and I'm also down for, I believe she might be an Antivan crow, but she looks like a total badass. I want to romance her, or I want to be her best friend. I do not want to be her enemy. I hope not. <laughs> but I am super excited for Dragon Age. I hope Taventure is going to be involved. I hope we have Dorian and Fenris as guides. I know recently also released as a comic, there's a side story of Fenris being sought out by the Inquisition. I wish this storyline had been incorporated into Dragon Age Inquisition, but I guess I'll take whatever amount of Fenris we can get and I am so excited to have Solus as an antagonist. I feel like he's going to be one of the top antagonists of Dragon Age, especially there's like 
a lot of feelings involved because my Inquisitor romanced him and she has a bone to pick with him. Solus, don't leave me, not now. I love you. You have a rare and marvelous spirit. In another world. Why not this one? So yeah, I am excited for Dragon Age. <laughs> Okay, next, if you are a horror fan, I have some manga licensing and release news for you. So if you love The Ring with Samara, in Japan she's known as Sadako, and she's played baseball on TV before, but now she is in the post-apocalypse with Sadako at the end of the world. This release is going to come out in October, and essentially it follows two orphans, two lonely girls, who accidentally stumble across her tape. She comes out, and instead of being surprised they're so lonely, they're like, hey, let's be friends. So they help her go and murder people and become murder buddies in the post-apocalypse. <laughs> and in a very similar vein, there's going to be, I believe, coming out next year. I'll double check the dates and put it in this video, but there's Sadako-san and Sadako-chan, kind of like how in Batman vs. Superman where they're like, hey, our moms are both named Martha. These girls bonded over their names. So Sadako-san was like, oh, this child's name is also Sadako. Let's become murder frenzy buddies, buddies. I'll adopt you and we can murder people together like a big happy murder family. <laughs> and it kind of looks cute for horror, so I'm really excited for this one. It is totally right up my alley. Also, I do have to give a shout out spotlight to an upcoming figure. I do collect some figures and this one is just so absurd that I really, really wanted. So if you've seen, um, there are already existing statues of wubified bishoujo versions of like slasher villains. Well now, Japan has wubified an eldritch god. So there's Cthulhu, 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 Cthulhu. However that's pronounced in the tongue of the gods, Kahulu is now an idol, and I really actually love the design. There's like tentacle hair, a tentacle bow, and it just, <laughs> it makes me happy. So I want to save up and try to get that one. Okay, last but not least in nerdy news, I do want to talk about an upcoming Yuri anime that's coming out in October, and it's called Adachi and Shimamura. And typically, I gravitate more towards dark fantasy yuri with like vampires or something. However, I can have a little bit of fluff as a treat, just a little bit of amber sunlight in my October. And this anime looks wholesome and magical and wonderful. Like just looking at the key visual, it looks super imaginative. And it's about two high schooler girls who skip class together and they use their imagination and they develop a friendship and maybe something deeper. So I'm really looking forward to this anime. Okay, moving on to mental health channel life update news. I am feeling so much better. I am reading again. I am no longer crippled up in pain lying in a ball on the floor. <laughs> I can function as a human being or be as normal as I can be again. So it feels really good to be getting into the reading habit and I kind of to help me get into the swing of reading, I started requesting a lot of manga and novel arcs and I didn't expect <laughs> to get so many approved. So good news, I have a lot of reading material and also I have a lot of <laughs> reviews to share with you guys from, um, they're called arcs, so advanced reader copies. I'll try to get them out the day of the release. So you get the news, you get the deets, so you can figure out do I want to buy it or not as soon 
as possible and two that I'm really looking forward to is called The Phlebotomist and it's about a blood crazed society following a nuclear fallout and it kind of reminded me of a less Victorian version of Bloodborne so I was super excited for like horror post apocalyptic and two I have a space opera for you that kind of reminds me of the Expanse, um, the Alien franchise, or uh, it's called um, The Themis Files, with the first one being Sleeping Giants, but essentially it follows a scavenging crew that's exposed to a piece of alien technology, and they themselves are accidentally turned into a nanobioweapon, and everyone wants a piece of them, and there's a whole bunch of greedy corporation intrigue and I finished both of those already. I'm writing the reviews and I'm really excited to finally talk to you guys about those ones. I think also for videos I'm going to have the Hana Hockey one and then I'm going to probably in October I aim to have a Yandere video and for some of them I might put a um, viewer advisory warning because there's going to be probably some clips from Midsummer and Hannibal. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of body horror in those ones and I'm just excited for spooky season. Well, I think that's all the stuff that I wanted to share with you guys, but if there's any exciting news, things you're looking forward to in October and September spooky season wise let me know down below as always I hope you guys stay well and I'll catch you on the flip side see ya